Oh, good evening. Oh, my friends, it is. This is a hard day. It's a hard day for our country. It's a hard day to... It's a hard day. Uh, the tragic loss of a life today um, at the Capitol. A tragic day to watch um, destruction of um, the people's house, of yours and mine, to watch the total loss of control. And it makes no difference on our political stands or who, who did we vote for. It makes no difference. Tonight is not a night about that. Tonight is a night to say, God, be with us. Help us who are tr trying to live in this country. Again, it makes no difference, our political stance. What happened today is tragic. It's hard to believe that actually it happened in America. It happened in our country. It happened today, though. And I want each of us to pause as we begin our evening. Um, this seems almost <laughs> maybe not what we should study. And yet I know that this is where we need to ground ourselves, that in this time of frustration and anxiety, and for all of us, and it makes no difference our political stance, and it really doesn't. What we know is that tonight our country is in chaos. Tonight we have been left to the wolves. And it's not even because of another country. Oh, we had a threat that was intercepted from Iran. This isn't even about that. This is about our own. We need to tonight find ourselves looking into God's word even more. Thank you, Sandy, for saying that, because it is so true. Tonight, as many nights, this is where we ground ourselves no matter what. It is a night to reflect about who God is and how do we care for each other. This isn't a night to blame. It makes no difference. And blaming at this point isn't the answer. Blaming only makes you and me feel better, maybe. But it's not what we do. Tonight, we hold our brothers and sisters in Washington in our prayers for a woman who lost her life and I, I, I've been gone. I don't know the whole, I, I, I heard the first part of what was happening and then I had to leave. And then I'm, I just caught a little bit before we start. And it's sad. I can't even imagine the desecration to desecrate what is essentially my house and my place of having governance done. And yet it's been done. Again, I don't want to blame. I think there's plenty of blame to bow around everyone tonight. No matter which political party any of us rest in. Maybe this is what has been projected and seen in our biblical story and our narratives for many, many thousands of years. It is tonight that we are going to pause now and we're going to lift up our hearts in prayer. So please stop and let's just bow our heads and let's pray. God, this is a day where we want to cry. We don't understand. But what we've seen unfold today is not right. 
It is not good. It is not helpful. It is not as you have taught us. It is not as you have taught us as, as disciples and children of you to live. God, this night, this night, we come to you and say, what is it we need to do? What is the next step? How do we love those who are wanting to tear things apart? God, we pray for all of our people in D.C. We pray for those lawmakers who are serving as you have called each of them to do. We pray for those who want to have voice. God, we even pray for those that have done destruction because we know that judgment is in your hands. It's not in ours. God, we lift up the woman that was killed. The place that is our governance. Where we as a people can go has been desecrated. But God, this night, let the men and women who are gathering still to make decisions, let them hear our prayers. Let them hear the cries of the people. Let us unify and come together as your children. God, we lift you up in our hearts and in our prayers and continue to hold all as we go through these days ahead. In your name we pray. Amen. Tough night, isn't it? Makes it hard. But let's uh, get our Bibles and go to Genesis 24. We're going to see what else God showers us with information about. Do you realize we're not even halfway through Genesis yet? It's been a while, but it's been a good journey. It's been a great journey, in fact. Like I said, I think tonight's a hard night. My heart is heavy. My heart is bleeding. Because I know that we have our rights and we want to be able to live them. But, okay, let's move on. Chapter 24. Uh, we're going to start with verse uh, 49. So you remember where we're at? We're in uh, we're in the part of this. Uh, um, and we're getting genealogy, aren't we? Yeah. Now this is the tail end of the um, the request for um, from Eliezer uh, for Yitzhak Isaac to become the wife to have the wife have Rebecca Rebecca um, become and come back with him to Abraham. Because Abraham, remember, has sent out the promise or given Eleazar the promise that he what he needed to do to fulfill that uh, as well. So, you know, I I though I came across as I was studying a little bit more that some things that I I think were interesting because um, I, I looked in a different resource book for some more information. Verses one to nine. Now this is all just about chapter twenty four. And verses 62 to 67 define a problem and a resolution to that problem, okay? The drama is all the in-between stuff. And we have a couple of scenes in between. Scene two is really verses 11 to 27. We, get, we kind of begin with a prayer and we end with the doxology. And we start to get part of the part of the story. Now, I think really in in this third part of this chapter is where the suspense happens and where it really, um, we really get drawn into the story. 
So verses 28 to 61 are kind of that um, drawing us in. Now, what, what we discovered last week was that verses 34 to 49 really repeat the whole story and kind of reframes it for us again to remind us about what's going on. And I think that that's kind of interesting. I, I hadn't put together that this was really a four-part chapter. Normally, we get a chapter and then we get another chapter that's a part. This was a four-part in one that tells the story of Yitzhak uh, finding, um, being found a wife. And so I, I thought that was just an interesting tidbit. So, verse 49. So now, if you wish to deal faithfully and truly with my Lord, tell me that I may know, that I may know too, to turn right or left. He's really requesting now from, um, Rivka's father and Laban, um, permission about um, whether she's going to become his wife and, and whether the right or the left, or which way am I turning? Am I done or am I, am I going back or do I have to keep looking for that wife? Um, so really the story's now been told and this is the point where Eliezer is just waiting he needs to know. He wants to know which way is this story going for him. He waits. Oh, Batul. That's that was her uh, <laughs> Rivka's father's name. So in verse fifty, Laban and Batul answered, and they said, "The matter has come from Yahweh. He cannot speak anything to you, evil or good." Okay. In other words, there's nothing to object to. They find no reason to object to what Eleazar is asking for. They're in agreement. Um, you know, I think what's interesting is that with verse 50, that there is a conviction and a focus that is obvious and intense in how the words are, are lined up there. they were really precluding anything but an immediate acknowledgement of God's leading and anything else than a full compliance with the request. In other words, they really knew that God had done what God needed to do. Abraham had listened and sent Eleazar in good, in good faith. And this is what it was supposed to be. There is no question in their mind. Now you have to remember, they just met. And so there is huge amounts of trust and that kind of thing happening along with this. But it is good. It is where they need to be. So verse 51, here is Rivka before you. Take her and go that she may be a wife for the son of your Lord, as Yahweh has spoken. The request is granted. The request is granted. It is good. And, they, and he can take her. Now, I don't think this was like, okay, take her, fine, goodbye. We're, never gonna, we're not going to see her again. Or we're, we're kicking you out now. We're kicking you out. No, there was a little bit of arrangement that now had to happen. And so the the... The request has been granted, so Eleazar has now succeeded in his mission, in what God had sent him on through Abraham. Verse 52. So here's the resolution to the whole, to the whole story, really. Comes down to um, this point. From here, from 52 through like 60, 61, are kind of the resolution to the plot, which was to find a wife for, you know, for her, for him. So verse 52, it was when Abraham's servant heard the wor their words that he bowed to the ground before Yahweh. He bowed. Now remember, Eleazar originally was not a believer. He still had Baal gods. 
And yet through this journey, look at where he has come to. Look at how his transition has happened. He has become a believer and he now bows because of what has happened. Maybe for you and me, we can talk about that in our own journeys. Where is it that we hear, heard God? Where is it that we answered? How is it that we were able to reverence this God of creation? Verse 53. And the servant brought out objects of silver and objects of gold and garments and gave them to Rivka. And he gave presents to her brother and to her mother. I mean, Eleazar is just showering them all. Of course, you have to remember, he brought 10 camels loaded with goods and things for them. He knew he was going to find the right person. And so now he is giving the gifts. Verse 54 that ate and drank, he and the men that were with him, and spent the night. When they rose in the morning, he said, send me off to my Lord. But her brother and her mother said, let the maiden stay for a few more days, perhaps ten. After that, she may go. I think mom was having a little bit of a hard time. You think mom didn't want to have to say goodbye? And that may be. It also would have been culturally relevant, probably, to have waited just that little bit of time. Let the preparations happen. We have to remember, this isn't a wedding happening yet. This is nothing more than the betrothal is happening. And remember, in, culture, in, the, in this culture, betrothals were not about loving someone. They were about beginning to care and love after you were married. And then that time came to grow in relationship with each other. Verse 56, he said to them, do not delay me for Yahweh has granted success to my journey. Send me off that I may go back to my Lord. Now here's those words again. Remember back a ways back. We talked about the words we were looking for, granted success, go. These are the important words on the journey to take, to marry. These were the wor words that were so important. Now, Eliezer is not wanting to wait. He, he's like, no, do not delay me for Yahweh has said, God has given me orders. There are times and seasons for things to happen. Maybe for you and me, that's somewhat the same thing. Are there times that we want and need things when we need them? Yeah, there are. For, for me, for the liturgical cycle and church that we are part of, the liturgical cycle of the church is very driven by, I need things, we do things at a certain time. We have Advent and Christmas, Epiphany, and now we have about four weeks, five weeks, and we end up with Ash Wednesday and Lent and Easter. And, and we get all these things happening. There is, a, there is an order and a reason God has us doing things in that order. <coughs> Excuse me. And I think that's part of what's going on here as well. Verses 54 to 56 really talk about the prosperity of Eleazar and of Abraham as well. Sorry about that. Verse 57, they said, let us call the maiden and ask for an answer from her, from her own mouth. In other words, let's call Rivka, Re Rebecca, and see if, if she really wants to, does she want to like stay or does she want to leave like now? Now let's find out. And verse 58, they called Rivka and said to her, will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. I find it interesting, and, and, and think about this just a little bit. Here's Rivka, who's not met um, Eliezer, Abraham, Yitzhak, or anyone else. And here again, we get this messenger coming and saying, 
Will you go? Will you do? I think about Mary. When God came to her and said, you will be with child. And she said, I'm a lowly servant. What can I do? And, she's, and he said, you will. You will. And I think that that's what is so interesting, is in many ways, I will go. There wasn't, I don't hear hesitation. I don't hear a little, well, let me, let me think about it. Do I need 10 days like mom wants? Um, I, I, up, up till now, she's not even been part of this conversation. You have to remember, she is not important in this conversation at this point. She hasn't been included. No one asked. Do you want to get married? Hey, do you want to go off? No. And yet, as soon as she is asked by Eleazar, she says, I will go. Just as Mary said, let it be. Just as. Can we think of any of the other women who have done this in the Bible? Many of them have. Elizabeth. Esther. Have said, I will. Because they are faithful in what they are doing. And they understand who this God of creation is. Maybe tonight. That's what we need to hear too. Maybe we need to hear the echoing words of a God of creation who says, I am with you. Remember, be not afraid. 365 times, be not afraid is in the Bible. Be not afraid. Rivka was not afraid. I will go. I will go where you are calling me, Yahweh. I will go as you have, have planned this journey. Be not afraid. Be not afraid for you and me on this night. Be not afraid. Verse 59. You know, it's hard to get the pastor to stop sometimes. You know, sermons just start to roll out. I don't know. Just the way it is. Okay. Verse 59. I am being a little funny. I got to be a little lighthearted tonight. They sent off Rivka with um, their sister, with her nurse, and Abraham's servants with his men. And they gave Rivka farewell blessing and said to her, Our sister, may you become thousandfold myriads. May your seed inherit the gate of those who hate him. And Rivka and her maids arose, and they mounted the camels and went after the man. Their servant took Rivka and went away. Um... The nurse is interesting. Um, this is probably one of the few places we actually hear about a nurse coming with them as one of the servants. And, and she would have been one of the servants. Um, what we know is that... Um, so, okay, the marriage is being arranged here. But when he dies, and, and Yitzhak dies in chapter 35, so it's going to be a little while before we get there. The nurse dies as well, perhaps to hint that Rivka dies too. I, there's a, there's something interesting about the nurse. Like I said, that I I'm not sure that we have any other places that the nurse goes, and whether that is because um, she may have been there because of Rivka would have um, been beginning childbearing, and so this may be why the nurse goes as well. Okay, verse 62. And this is really a very happy reception time. You know, we're getting, 
here as well. Um, now Yitzhak, Isaac, had come from where you come to the well of the living one who sees me, for he settled in the Southland. Now remember, the well of the living one, we saw back in chapter 16, um, and, and is in, was important and still is important in, um, the, in the story. And, and so this is not an unfamiliar place. It would have been a common place to have um, been. So in chapter 16, it's verse 14. Therefore the well was called, well of the living one who sees me. Here it is between Kadesh and Bered. Uh, this is really where, remember back, this is where Hagar was found, um, where the angel found her as well. So this is really um, a place of faith. And so Yitzhak had come from where you come to the well of the living one who sees me, for he had settled in the Southland. Yitzhak had made the journey to this, back to Jacob's well. Um, now you have to remember, Yitzhak's name means set free. No, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, Yitzhak's name means set free because he was the father of the North Arab tribes. Okay, so he was set free at that point. Verse 63, And Yitzhak went out to stroll in the field around eventide, and he lifted up his eyes, and he saw camels coming. Oh, now Yitzhak knows what's happening. Okay, he already knows. Because if the camels are coming back, Something good has happened. Verse 64, this is, this is the love story. It really is. Rivka lifted up her eyes and saw Yitzhak. And she got down from the camel and said to the servant, Who is this man over there that is walking in the field to meet us? And the servant said, That is my Lord. She took a veil and covered herself. Now the servant recounted to Yitzhak, all the things that he had done. And Yitzhak brought her into the tent of Sarah, his mother. He took Rivka and she became his wife and he loved her. Thus was Yitzhak comforted after his mother. Okay. There's a couple of things that are interesting here, I think, for us to think about. Um, going back up to verse 60, well, not actually for this whole section, 60 to 67, there's four things that have really happened. There's the blessings are being given here, and it echoes what's happened, what we heard in verse 1 as well. First, we hear that there's a blessing because Yitzhak is now being blessed. There is prosperity, and think about everything that um, was taken and given to Rivka. There is loyalty and fidelity, both by Eleazar and Yitzhak and Rivka and her family and Abraham. And there is guidance of God. It is about the faith in their lives. Now, this is what I want to ask, and maybe it's something that we ponder and that you ponder, maybe it's appropriate for tonight, who knew, that being blessed, prosperity, loyalty and fidelity and the guidance of God equals the faith in our lives. Are we blessed? Oh, there's not one of us that's not blessed. Family, friends, house, food, relationships, opportunities, churches, pastors and friends. You and I are blessed beyond blessed. Prosperity 
Isn't that one of the promises that Abraham and um, had heard from Yahweh? That there would be prosperity? I would say there's none of us who suffer from that. In fact, I, I kind of had to chuckle. Um, I was at a uh, food pantry board meeting this evening. That's where I came from and before I got back here. And I discovered, um, well, one, we have a food pantry that has so much food, so much food, then we're not going to increase how often people can come to us. We give them more than imaginable. It is because of the gracious gifts of a God of creation and a community who wants to care for the people. That's prosperity. Loyalty and fidelity. How loyal and how, how much has our... How much have we stayed true to a God of creation? How often do we want to blame and say, oh, it's that other person's fault, or it's, oh, I don't know why would God let us get in this mess? We can be angry about what's going on in D.C. tonight. I don't want to be angry. I want to be prayerful. I want to lift my prayers to a God of creation and say, we need your help. Oh, so badly we need you to intervene in what's going on in our world. And that fourth part of that is God's guidance. Do we listen? Do we really want to hear what God might be saying? Or do we want to just kind of, well, you know, God, I'll, I'll kind of take your advice, but hey, only if it's my way. Do we want to stop and really listen? Sometimes we want to not do what we think what we should do. Because it might make us feel good to do something else instead of the right thing. What we know is God is with us. He is here. Emmanuel has come. He gave us our marching orders on that Christmas. And he told us not to pack them away just because it's Epiphany. But instead, to go and do all that there is to do. Yeah. I think it's interesting in verse 67 there that yet Yitzhak brought her into the tent of Sarah, his mother. You know, it is, it is wanting approval from his mother to meet the new bride. And she became his wife and he loved her. So Yitzhak comforted after his mother. You know, it was really the transition for Yitzhak to leave his mother and to go to his wife, to Rivka. Now, the the marriage opportunity or the the marriage rights are very different in this culture of how that happens and how the all the ritual and the week long celebration and that kind of thing and the consummation of that marriage. Well, what we know is Yahweh was present then. He is present tonight. My friends, I know this is a hard day. It is not going to go down in history as a bright day for our country. I want you all to know with assurance that God is with us. He's not left us. <clears throat> He's not abandoned us. But be not afraid to share your story of faith. Because those four things, being blessed and prosperous, being loyal and, and, and living in fidelity and the guidance of God, are the virtues of our faith. 
Can we go share those with a world that is obviously very broken and hurting? My dear friends, we need to end for tonight. Don't forget to join me on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Um, for the people locally, we will be starting to gather again, social distancing and masks, if you're comfortable. If not, of course, we're going to be on Facebook because it's reaching too many other people. Come back next week, and we actually... We might actually get through chapter 25 next week. It's kind of a fun chapter. There's a whole lot of fun things that um, you will learn in that. I, I was fascinated with, um, with it. So come back and see me Wednesday, Sunday, and then Wednesday. And now, my dear friends, let your hearts not be troubled tonight. Let God walk before you to give you safe path. Let him walk behind you to cover your back. Let him walk beside you to be your friend. Walk above us to keep us safe and below us to hold us when we fall. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen, my friends. Go in peace.